Hello there guys, my name's Matt and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the proper method for polishing epoxy or a polyurethane finish. And I've got an epoxy worktop here that's got a few scratches on the surface after about two years worth of use. I'm gonna show you step by step which polishes to use, which sponges to use, how hard to push, and the proper method on how to get a high gloss finish. So keep watching and I'll show you guys how to do it. So first of all, I'm just cleaning the area and wiping it down with some surface cleaner and then using some masking tape to protect any of the delicate areas like silicon joints and paintwork. So starting off with a variable speed orbital sander, I got this one from Screwfix. It's their own brand called Urbea or something like that. I'll put a link in the description for it so you can see it for yourself. I started off with a P120 grip sanding pad and realized that that wasn't enough to grip into the surface because this epoxy has cured for about two years now and it gets harder and harder with age. So we're starting off with 80 grip and then we'll move on to 120 grip and then 240, then 400 wet sanding, and then 600 and then 1200. But I'll show you a bit more about that that a bit later on but the aim is to get the surface as flat as possible and you can see these little dibbits here that I've then gone back over and that have been exposed as you sand the surface and you just want to try to sand as evenly as possible not too much in one area you want to try and blend that into the surface so you don't want to have a big dibbit once you finish with it so sand that down and then blend around it and then sand it down and blend around it again and you should get a nice flat surface. So you can see here that I've now hooked up the orbital sander to a vacuum cleaner and I'm also wearing a respirator because my wife said that I was being a bad example and I really should be wearing safety protection while sanding the surface. So I'm just continuing to blend the surface and make sure it's as flat as possible and um, trying to be a good example to you guys. Then using some tissue and some pure acetone, wipe down the surface to get rid of as much dust as possible between each sanding process. Now that the surface is flat and clean, we're now moving back onto 120 grit and working our way up in the grits all the way up to 1200 grit. You don't need to be as hard on the surface now because you're basically just trying to get the finish of the surface to 120 grit rather than grinding into it so deeply to try and get it flat. Now wiping it down with the pure acetone again and just trying to remove all that residual dust from the previous grit so it doesn't contaminate the next grit that you move up onto. We're now using P240 grit and this is going to be the last dry sand that we'll do. We'll start moving on to wet sanding now and like I said before just use a light motion across the surface and try to buff the surface up to the next level of grit. You don't need to push down too hard because you're just going to remove extra material. We're then just doing a final wipe down with the pure acetone. This is not the same as nail varnish remover so there's a link in the description for this industrial grade acetone if you want to find it for yourself. Then using some 400 grit wet and dry paper using water to lubricate the surface this time buff the surface as much as possible and this time it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see where you've already sanded but just wet polish as much as you can as comprehensively as possible and then wipe it down afterwards to get rid of the excess slurry and dust. We're then moving on to 600 grit wet and dry paper, lubricating the surface like we did before and just wet polishing the surface trying to get all of the areas that you did with the previous grit. If you don't get all of the areas that you did with the previous grit it's going to be harder to polish out those deeper scratches at the end with the actual polish that we use in the polishing machine. The final wet polish that we'll do will be the 1200 grit wet and dry paper and this will give us a good base to start using the machine polisher and the liquid polish polishes that we'll be using after this. This will give a nice consistent and even matte finish across the surface. So you can see here we've now got a very fine 1200 grit matte finish. We've got a few bits of dust over here. But I'm going to give it a quick dry wipe over and then we'll start polishing it with the polisher. And you can see here this indentation that we had that was quite big before and now it's very very small and it will be limited to this area. So let's go on with the polishing. So we've got three types of sponge here. We've got hard, medium, and soft. And I found out the medium sponge works really well with this 3M fast cut compound, which is gonna be the first polishing compound in the two that we're gonna be using. Because you can push hard into the surface at first and grind the surface up to a fairly low level gloss and then go afterwards lightly over the surface at a higher speed. And you can polish the surface up to a much higher gloss with the same sponge. So you don't have to go with two different processes. So now just work the polish into the sponge and across the surface to try and get an even lubrication. You don't want too much polish on there because it will fling all over the place. So first of all, I'm going to go on a low speed. I've got 600 RPM set on the digital speed control. If I push that down and push that in, it will leave the polisher constantly on. And what I'm gonna do is just push down fairly hard to grip into that 1200 grip that we have across the whole worktop. That will start to bring up to a nice shine. And then as we pull that shine out of the worktop from the 1200 grip, I'll put it onto 1000 RPM or 1500 RPM and then just go fast and lightly 
over the whole worktop. And that'll take it up to a little bit of a higher shine. And then we'll move on to the other polish afterwards, which is the fine polishing compound. So I'll just show you how to do that all now. Starting off with pushing down quite hard. So I found that this polisher has been really good at regulating its speed with different amounts of pressure pushed down on the surface, which is really important for getting a consistent grind and polish out of the polishing compound that you're using. It also comes with a full set of sponges, so if you just want to copy the exact same process that I've used in this video, then it will make things a lot easier for you, but any good quality polisher will work. So I've put a link in the description for that polishing kit along with every other product used in this video so you've got a full shopping list of things that you need for this project. what it looks like so you can see there there is some polish still left on the surface but it's starting to get a lot more shiny and the polish is drying out so i'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of the worktop so i'm going to do it in quarters do this side first that side this side and that side and then we're going to wipe it all off and i'll go on with the next polish you can see here in the surface when i'm polishing that there is this white patch here which is sticking to the surface and then when it's polished and it becomes glossy this white patch will go away that's the 1200 grit then turning into a high gloss finish i'm just pushing down quite hard and you can see as i move into new areas that's not been polished yet and then I go over it. So just carefully finish polishing off the surface, remembering to use a fairly hard pressure but low speed at about 600 RPM. Then in the second pass, reduce the pressure and increase the speed up to around 1500 RPM. Then wipe the surface clean, removing all the residual polish. So we're now moving on to this bottle, which is the second in the two that are in order here. That was the first one, which is the one on the left there. And this is the one on the right. Fast cut and perfect it fine compound. We're also using the softest sponge out of the three. It squeezes a lot easier and this should give it a nice soft polishing. Using the same process as before, work the 3M fine polishing compound into the sponge first, then apply it to the surface and move it around to lubricate the surface. Then like before, use a high pressure and a low speed. And then this time in a second pass, use a low pressure and a higher speed of around 2000 RPM. Continue to polish the surface like this and use a microfiber cloth in between to check the surface until you get a really high gloss finish. It took two rounds of polishing of this final process to achieve this ultra high gloss finish that you can see now. If you found this video helpful at all, it really would mean a lot to me if you guys would consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel because I've got plenty more DIY and concrete content coming for you in the future. And I'm really active in the comments below, so if you've got any specific questions relating to this project, please do ask and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.